So hi, Hannes. Hi. We are here at uh, Oak Sound booth, and we're going to look at Bloom, right? Yes. So talk us through it. What what is it? Yeah, Bloom is our upcoming plugin. It's an adaptive tone shaper, and what we mean by that is that it analyzes the incoming signal and then applies correction uh, according to the perceived tonal balance of a sound. So, in a sense. In a sense, it's making the sound more balanced, and that's what this main amount knob here is doing. Now, let's just jump quickly jump into a an example. Here we have a Mellotron, and this is the factory default uh, preset. So, as with Soothe, for example, it's not doing anything if the amount is at zero. And as we turn up the amount, it, it starts to apply these uh, adaptive changes to that signal. So as you can see, we had some boosting and some cutting going on there at the same time. Now, after this, the user can then define their own taste and how, what, what kind of changes they want Bloom to do. So if we still want more low end or less low end, we can use these four bands to then further uh, push Bloom in the direction we want as users. And if we move over to another example, let's say just a classic boomy guitar, I can show you another, just another example. So here it does a lot of the things you might want to do with an EQ or a dynamic EQ or a multiband compressor or all of those. Um, we're scooping out that low end and adding some high end sheen as well uh, in, at the same time. And everything is happening uh, in real time, adaptively. None of those changes are static. And if the tonal content coming thr through would change, it would change with it. So, so what is, is it a dy dynamic EQ, or uh, what, how is it doing this? Um, so it's based off of our algorithm. So um, it's actually a large part is about the, an uh, the analysis that is happening for the incoming signal. And it's based upon a few different ideas that we've been working on. Some of it is about what is warmth in audio. Um, how do you achieve warmth, uh, warm sound in audio? Another one is how do you uh, make tonal changes to get more presence out of a sound. And then the third one is, how do you get more overtones out of a sound without adding more overtones with saturation? Because usually there are a lot of overtones already in a sound. It's just that when you boost with static, uh, when you make static changes to that sound, you might not get the, the result you want. And then an adaptive solution is, would fit better. Brilliant. So should we hear some more examples then? Yeah, sure. Um, I can go over and show just a full mix over here. So here it is on a mix bus. And now we can also see the mid side controls. Because these bands, you can uh, have different um, shapes going on for your mid channel and for a side channel. So here I want more low end in the mid, I want less uh, side uh, in, the, in the low end. And then, yeah, let's listen to this. Obviously, here we're doing a lot, and if you if you feel like this is too much, you can always, of course, we have your classic mix setting, and you can mix that in. And then one thing I haven't talked about yet is the squash area. So when we turn up amount um, over seven, 
we, get, we start getting frequency dependent compression. So we start reducing the dynamic range over this shape that we made, which means that you get this compressor-like sound. And when we're in that squash area, it might also help to adjust your attack and release depending on how much you want it to target the transients or not. Cool. So um, is it available now? What, what's the kind of time scale for this? Boom is um, coming soon. We're saying in the coming months. And uh, yeah, we're just finalizing it, squashing the final bugs. And yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll be out really soon. And uh, do we have a kind of idea of uh, the price point? Um, we have not announced the price yet, but it will be in the ballpark of our existing plugins. Excellent. Well, Hannes, thank you very much. Thank and you. Uh, thank you for speaking to us.